Hello everybody and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we're going to be making a kind of a foodie soap. I was really excited to do this. I am doing a buttermilk and banana soap. Um, and this is buttermilk that I've actually made. Uh, I get raw organic milk every week from a Mennonite farm not too far from here. We used to milk our own cow and our children grew up and moved away and it was too much milk for us. So now I buy my organic milk from a neighboring farm and they have wonderful um, farming practices, uh, organically raised jerseys. So anyway, I make butter every week um, and what's left over is real buttermilk and it's not uh, the thick yellow stuff that you get in the store. Um, I haven't cultured this yet so it's thin but um, that, there it is, real organic buttermilk and uh, let me see I've printed out something or wrote out some things. Buttermilk is high in lactic acid, alpha hydroxy acids which are really good for your skin. Um, it's known to be skin brightening, it's very healing, uh, cell rejuvenation so that's why I'm putting the buttermilk in there. The banana uh, is really good for your skin also. People do banana facials, but I'm gonna put this in the soap. It's moisturizing, uh, it's high in antioxidants, vitamins A, B, and E. Um, it says to, that bananas can help prevent wrinkles, which we like that. I'm in my 50s and you know what? I'll take it where I can get it. <laughs> um, and it's also good for acne prone or scarred skin, uh, very healing. Uh, the other thing that I'm gonna put in the soap today is calendula flower powder, or if you say calendula, wherever you put your syllable, the homeschool mom and me is coming out, sorry. Um, but I'm gonna put that in there for the properties in that too, just gonna make this a super gentle, very skin nourishing, skin healing bar. So calendula, or that's how I say it, calendula, I don't wanna bug you if I'm saying it wrong. Um, it's, I looked up, it's a soothing, moisturizing, it has antiseptic properties. Um, it improves the blood flow to your skin, which is good. We all want that. Um, it's also good for wrinkles. I'm taking it where I can get it. And it's, it's supposed to plump up skin and uh, it stimulates wound healing. So that would be with the increased blood flow. So that's why I'm putting the calendula, calendula <laughs> in the soap. Um, and then for coloring, I'm going to use a natural organic turmeric powder, which it's this beautiful color now. It's gonna turn a sort of a brownish yellow in there, but I thought it just sort of, you know, it might be like a banana color when I get done with all this. Um, and I am going to use, let's see if we can see, burnt sugar. And this is from Brambleberry. Um, yeah, it just smells really good. It. Um, I'm not a fan of banana smell. My husband loves bananas. I'm not a big banana lover, but it they're good for you. So um, I wanted to put this scent in there. I didn't do a banana scent on purpose. Also, the other ingredient that I'm gonna be throwing in here is my organic colloidal oats. Now I do put this in almost all of my soap batches, but I'm gonna put a little extra portion in here because I thought it just went along with the whole skin nourishing theme, just amp it up. Let's just go all the way with it. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, colloidal oats is known to be soothing, moisturizing, it reduces inflammation. We like that. Uh, and it's good for problem skin also. And uh, you know everybody knows oatmeal is just very soothing on your skin. That's why if you uh, get the itchies, you take an oatmeal bath, it feels good. So we're putting it in the bar. That's what we're doing. And also the other thing I'm excited about today is I have my brand new slab mold. I've been wanting this for so long and I finally got it, so excited. And this is from Workshop Heritage Soap Supplies. I got it on Etsy. Um, so yeah, this is my first time using it. So excited, and then with that, I got my slab cutter with from him also. So you're gonna come along with me while I use this for the first time. Super excited, I'm gonna pull everything together. I'm gonna get my lye into my buttermilk. It's been in the uh, fridge, it's very cool, and I'm gonna stir the lye in really slowly. It'll yellow a little bit, kind of like working with goat's milk, any milk product. Um, so I'm gonna get my lye solution going and cooled off, get my oils melted, and we'll come back and make some soap. All right, we are back, and my uh, lye solution here with my buttermilk is all cooled and I put a little titanium dioxide in here to uh, brighten it up a little so it won't be quite so yellow. I've got my oils here all melted and cooled and what I'm gonna do now, I poured off just a little bit of oil. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put my banana in now. I wanted to wait till the last minute because I didn't want it to get all oxidized and brown and funky. So I'm gonna mash my banana in this little bit of oil and then I'm gonna add it back in at trace. I had a very thin trace. I'll mix it in before I split up and color the rest of the batch. So there is my whole banana. Take my stick blender here and mash it up. Pardon the noise. And there it is. Perfectly smooth, like very runny baby food. So go ahead and take the blender here with my banana bits on it and go right into my oils. buttermilk lye solution with my Tussa silk fibers and titanium dioxide. And I did a water discount. I weighed my banana and did a water discount for the banana puree, which was uh, about four ounces. Well, liquid discount. This isn't water. It's buttermilk, my fresh raw buttermilk. Okay, let's give this a quick buzz in here to get it all incorporated. Okay. And just playing it safe, I'm going to use my whisk here until I get everything, all my additives and things in. Actually, no, I need to add my powdered additives. I should have put these in earlier, but in here I have colloidal oats, kale and clay, and my calendula or calendula powder in here. We'll go ahead and blend that in. we've got that all blended up nice and I'm going to go ahead now and add my banana puree with the little bit of oils that I used in there because I want that getting blended in really well sugar scent which is such oh it's a beautiful scent it does have a little vanilla in it vanilla content so it will um, darken the batter to a, well the cured soap to a light tan to light brown color tan to light brown but to me oh it's just a really good smell and I think it kind of goes to the banana oat sort of feel. I think it's going to be wonderful. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull the stick blender out now and go to my whisk for um, incorporating my turmeric powder to um, color a portion of this batter. Sorry, I'm making little splashes here. Let me get these cleaned up. All right. Go ahead and pour off some of my batter here for my color. And I think that's good. Just this in here. All right. And here's my 
organic turmeric powder. And I don't want this to be super dominant color, so I'm just maybe gonna do a nice heaping teaspoon there and stir it around and see what we get. I wish it stayed this bright of an orange. It would be so beautiful, but it doesn't. It goes to brown, but it's a nice earthy sort of orangey brown. So, I mean, I like it very much. And you know, turmeric has um, really good health benefits internally and externally as well. Um, it's just a great additive. So I think that's good. We're not gonna go too dark on the color. I'm gonna take my whisk and blend it in a little bit stronger here. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty. It's almost a pumpkin-y color. It's lovely. All right, now is my fun time, my brand new mold. I'm so excited to try this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of my base color in here. Got a nice layer of that down. And we'll put in our nice turmeric color. All right. And come back in with the base. pour from up high, get it to go down a little bit. All right, I'm gonna save a little for the top here. Boy, I thought I did the math on this mold. I got it pretty full, it's good. I think it's gonna fit in there well. Um, anytime you're trying a new recipe, run it through your soap calculator, double check. Better to be safe than sorry. All right, so I've got my little cable tie hanger swirl here. You can get these at the hardware store. They're nice stiff cable ties, and um, I think people use them to tie up big long things. Anyway, it makes a great hanger swirl tool. got my lines here so we'll go ahead and try to make a little stripe down for each bar. This is my first time doing tall skinny soaps so I'm excited I got my label designed for them. go on top is some oats and some calendula petals. Just going to go real sparingly. 
because I don't want to take away from the soapiness of it. Every bar gets just a little. All right, and then we'll put the calendula petals on, which are so pretty. And if you put them on top, they keep their yellow color. They don't discolor too too badly. I mean, the lye um, saponification process will affect it just a little, but not bad. I'm going to pat those down a little when I get everything on. I tried to pull out the, um, these were actually whole flowers and they had the like stems and the heads of the flowers, which are pretty when they're completed, but these were sort of mashed up. I buy these in bulk and this is what I use to make. I use the whole calendula flower head to make my um, oil infusions when I make my calendula oil, I solar infuse it, I will fill a, a large gallon mason jar up with the herbs that I'm infusing and set them out on my sunny porch for two weeks, shaking them every day. Uh, you fill it up with, I use um, extra virgin olive oil or for that is how I do it and um, after two weeks the oil has leached out all the good properties from the herbs and then uh, I strain off the herbs and you have a really nice oil infusion um, which I'll be doing some of that. I did it with lavender, I did it with calendula, um, sandalwood and uh, what was the other one I did? Lavender, calendula, oh rose petals yes and that was turned out beautiful. All right let me clean up the mold here and I'm going to spray this with my 91% rubbing alcohol and put this beautiful slab mold to bed <clears throat> and we'll come check on it tomorrow. Let me get my rubbing alcohol here. There we go. And there is our calendula, banana, buttermilk, turmeric, goodness, there it is. I'm going to put the lid on and I'm not going to throw a blanket over this because of the milks in there and it's all lidded up in a wood mold. I think this will be just fine and we will come back and take a look in the morning for the cut. All right, good morning. It's the next day and we are going to unmold my slab mold for the very first time and again this uh, came from workshop heritage soapery I don't know if you can see his thing there uh, oh that smells so good when I lift the lid off it smells wonderful so. bottom out go that was easy and pull this away boy it's nice very flexible and easy so I think we'll set it like that and peel away here that's how I've seen it done think. Yep. I guess that's how we do it. Oh, that's nice. And there's that. Look at that. Very nice. Now, I'll bring my slab cutter over and set this down. And I have it all measured out to the depth I want. 
It's really nice. It came with these little stepping measurements here so you can get it exactly the width you want. All right, here we go. one of our buttermilk banana. There we go. A little bit of a learning curve, but we got it. And let's the, get these cut into bars and see what we've got on the inside. <laughs> 